Sufyan, just one thing uh, I want to ask you. You are attending the classes of EMI, Sufyan and Taha, both of you. You have not studied current electricity with me and I was teaching current electricity in the batch. You are not attending the classes. You're directly attending the classes of EMI. Any specific reason, both of you, Sufyan, Taha? Ma'am, I have school till 5.30. Not 5.30, yeah. What? Ma'am, I have extra classes so I like school so to complete portions. Okay, you're having extra classes. You should have informed Taha. We would have... No, no, I didn't. Have you informed anyone? Ma'am, um, the uh, chart for the tuition. Okay, okay. okay. And uh, Sufyan, what about you? I understand Taha's point if he's having extra classes. What about you, Sufyan? Capacitance also you were irregular. Potential, I think till potential only you had attended the classes. You are good with studies, Sufyan. You give correct answers also. But why are you not attending the classes of current electricity? That I want to ask before. Because from magnetics you have done. Magnetics, both the this magnetism also, EMI also. EMI is last class is also there. Three chapters. But those pending, that's why I've gone very slow in the other batch because you already were doing extra portion from here. So I knew that I just had to complete till current electricity. Yes, Sufyan, any reason I want your answer, Sufyan? Okay, timings issue, same timings issue. Okay, Sufyan, then I'll communicate your timings issue. Well, they, they'll talk to you whatever timings are suitable because classes missing is not a good thing because I know that uh, it's a basic chapter you must have done it in your school and uh, right now you are focusing on EMI and everything that I understand Sufyan but it's just that some things are discussed in the class which if not done properly in the basic concepts that leads to the problem when you're doing a second chapter or a different chapter. All right. When you're doing a new chapter, that time you will see there are concepts that are getting stuck. So for that purpose, I wanted you to join. Because see, sometimes I just give the reference that this chapter, which we have done in that batch. Okay. So that's why I wanted to ask you, Sufyan and Taha. So... If it's just the timing issue, yeah, they're telling me Taha has answered, Taha has informed, Sufyan, you have not informed. Him. So if you all, any one of you who is taking a leave, planned proper leave, like you know you are not going to attend the class, a particular class, just inform the team. Okay, because you are all assignments, homework, everything is being regulated. So if you are suddenly regular with the classes, then your feedback is also negative. If we know that, yes, you are absent due to this particular reason or you have informed us that you're going to be absent, then that's a different. Then we will consider it as a proper leave. Right? So we will also be aware of it. Okay, then I'll talk. But Sufyan, if you're missing classes in this manner that it's a, it's a previous chapter, then do not miss the classes. And for both of you, Sufyan and Taha, for both of you. Timing issue is a different thing. If you are able to manage and if you are not attending the classes because of that reason, see, you will get stuck in semiconductors. You will get stuck in semiconductors because it is completely extension of your current electricity. Semiconductors. Ray optics, wave optics have no connection. You will be able to manage. A new student who has just uh, come in the class 12, that child else will also be able to manage with the ray optics. You'll be able to manage with the wave optics and the ray optics because it's a completely different segment. That doesn't relate with your portions of class 11. Uh, class 11 as well as class 12. Yeah, 11, it relates, but not just the first book of the class 12. So that's why when you're studying first book, these are in sequence. These are in proper sequence. 
everything is sequential. If you see, see, we start from electrostatics, charges are at rest, then we move to charges are in motion. When the charges begin in motion, then we see that magnetism is introduced. Magnetism has a major portion and then we have EMI, electromagnetic induction, which combines magnetic and electric. So everything is sequential, so don't miss out. Thing. That's what I want to say. Okay, coming back to induction. So we have studied Faraday's law. It's a very short chapter. Class, I hope in EMI, you are not having any doubts. If anyone is having any query in EMI, please let me know any particular doubt in EMI because it's a short chapter. And the best part is that it has a good weightage. Weightage is not very less. It has a good weightage and Derivations are also there, formula-based questions are also there, and basic, basic questions are there. So you study less, you study simple things, and you score good marks. This is that kind of chapter. Okay, AC is a tough chapter. When we'll be coming to alternating current AC, the next chapter after this, chapter 7, when we'll be going to uh, this chapter, uh, alternating current. That time you can, without practice, AC is not done. Property. But EMI is a chapter if you know the formula of motional EMF, it's BLB, and you get a question on motional EMF, you'll be able to solve that question properly. So that's the benefit of EMI. So from EMI, at least take out the maximum benefit. AC is also not difficult. It's just that if you, you cannot uh, understand AC directly, it's just that because it's a new concept. DC current is different, AC current is different. That I'll tell you when we start the chapter. So um, we had started in Faraday's law that when a magnetic flux is changed, induced current is introduced, which produces induced EMI, which is directly proportional to the flux. When this process occurs within the same coil, we say this is the, which type of induction? Self-induction. This is self-induction. Okay. Um, one more thing, mutual induction we didn't start and we have to complete a portion of self-induction. Yes, uh, unit, SI unit of self-induction. Can anyone tell what's the SI unit of self-induction? Very good, it's handy. Uh, I also told you to remember the dimensions because in the one or two previous papers I've seen in the shorter portions, dimensions are also asked. Though this is not a portion and part of your class 12, I don't know why it was given, but it was mentioned. Then, uh, okay, this part was left, self-inductance of a long solid. Now, what is meant by a long solid? Whenever you have the term long in your physics, it doesn't mean that the length is very huge. When we use the term long, long means the term long means that it, the ends are infinite. The ends are extending to infinity. So long solenoid means a very long solenoid as in it ends are extending to infinity. So long word you will get in Gauss theorem also. Long wire, infinitely long wire or even the term infinite would be omitted, but the entire sentence would be mentioned. So you have to identify whether this is talking about a long, infinitely uh, long solenoid or a shorter. Okay. So yes, self-inductance of a long solenoid. C, B is equal to, yes. Uh, Sidra, you tell me what is the formula of magnetic field of a solenoid? Sidra. We have done this in the fourth chapter itself, and this is the sixth chapter. Yes, Sidra. Magnetic field of a solenoid or a toroid, both are same. Yes, Sidra. Magnetic field of a solenoid. I'm just asking you the magnetic field of a solenoid. Hmm, Sidra. Zaina. Okay, Sidra. NIA is the magnetic moment, Sidra. That's not the magnetic field. Yeah, Zaina. Can you complete it?
NIA. Yes, What's the formula according to you? Mu not N I. Mu not N I. Why is it taking so long for you all to answer this? Means you all are not studying. B is equal to mu not N I. These questions at least should have been answered faster. What is N? Sidra, at least complete this part. What is N here? You're not studying, Sidra. Zaina, you tell. You have answered the formula mu not ni. Can you tell what is n for solenoid? Because that is the difference point. Number of turns of the solenoid. Number of turns of solenoid. No. Sidra incorrect and Zaina incorrect. Yaya, can you tell? Number of turns per unit length. Number of turns per unit length class. Sidra Zaina. See, per unit length will also come. Because if you're not using per unit length, this is this is signifying the other formula that is capital N itself. Okay. Now this remember this small n, this is equal to number of turns per unit length. And the length of a circle is 2 pi r. So steroid is a circle. That's why the formula is mu naught n i. But when we expand n, it is n divided by 2 pi r. And when we're talking about the magnetic field of a solenoid, it is also mu naught n i. But small n here signifies capital N divided by L. That is number of turns per unit length. We have done two questions also. One without number of turns per unit length mentioned in the question. One simply with mention. That defers the answer. Just revise that part. Revise this. Okay, not just these two. Everybody will be revising solenoid topic today. Otherwise, I'm going to start one thing. I'll take your viva in the last 15 minutes of the class. I'll be giving you portions from your from the portion which we have covered. And I'll be taking your viva. That is the only solution. Yes, Khadija, what is magnetic flux formula? Khadija Khan. Magnetic N B A cos theta. N B A cos theta. N B A cos theta. Correct. That is B dot A. If number of turns we are taking it as one, this is simply B A. But yes, number of turns are included here. So when we put the formula of magnetic field here, flux. This is this becomes mu naught. Uh, I, number of turns N and area A. Okay. What is capital N? This is clear, small n into L. Sidra, Zaina, clear to both of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number of turns per unit length. Remember, when you're saying number of turns, this is just the number of turns. Okay. So, all of you will be revising solenoid at least today. I'll ask you questions in the next class. Yes. So, magnetic flux linked with the entire solenoid. See, this is what we have discussed for just one single turn. As you all are answering that for n number of turns also, we have to consider the same thing. So what we'll do, we have the flux for each turn now and we we'll multiply it with the number of turns. So here we have mu naught n i a magnetic flux linked with each turn multiplied to the number of turns. What are the number of turns? Small n into a. These are the two things which we have the which we have got. This is the magnetic flux. This is the number of turns. Magnetic flux linked with each turn and number of turns. So I think this will be squared up. So it is mu naught n square i a into n. Okay. Uh, one thing. If you see this properly, Yes, Taha, you tell me. Unmute yourself, Taha. Yes, ma'am. Taha, you tell me in this, if I take these two out, which quantity will it give me? Oh, ma'am. Um... 
remember we have done it recently only. I mean, inductance. Hmm? Um, inductance. Correct. Very good. self inductance. Li. But just one thing, Taha. Li, which I, I am talking about the entire product. Okay. L you are writing, that is correct. L is the self inductance. I am talking about the entire. So that is five. Not just inductance. Inductance is this only. And I was talking about the entire bracket. So, that is fine. At least you are near to the answer, but the answer is incorrect. See, this is also flux. And flux is equal to Li also. Why am I asking? Because then this can be cut. This will be cut. So see, Li is equal to mu naught. Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I was writing phi is equal to Li. And from here, yeah, we have mu naught n square i. Okay. Now, L, what we are doing, this is i, and here we are having the length. This is the length of the conductor. I think this will be a little confusing with the inductance. Um, let me do one thing. See, from this equation, otherwise, let's, let's remove the length part, number of turns. Simply let us multiply it with the number of turns. Okay, length part I'm removing because length and inductance, it will be a little confusing. And this length actually has no significance. So straight away when we are using phi is equal to mu naught n square i a. Phi is equal to l i. Now that length is eliminated so that we can use the direct formula. Now, uh, Taha, which you were answering is now absolutely fitting in, which is the l i formula that is giving the inductance with the flux. Okay, so flux we have in both the cases. So this is equal to L is equal to mu naught N square. Okay, area is there. Area we cannot eliminate because see, if we eliminate area, area has both the components. It has the component of length also. Okay, component of length is also present in the, component of length is also present in the area already. So if we write length again, that can be volume. So length can be eliminated here. Yes? So that's why I've removed length. Number of turns are already mentioned. So when once you are multiplying it, this will. So L is equal to mu naught N square A. This is the formula. Or if you want, you can write in terms of the number of turns per unit length. That will be N square A by L square. So this way length can be added. Otherwise, you can use the counter directly. Uh, write it till here.
see this is a 12 volt battery connected to a 6 ohm 10 henry coil through a switch drives a constant current through the circuit the switch is suddenly opened if it takes 1 milliseconds to open the switch find the average emf induced across the coil so battery here the voltage this is 12 volt the resistance is 6 ohm and the inductance here is 10 henry uh, then it says that if it takes so time is 10 1 milliseconds 10 to the power minus 3 seconds we have to find out the average emf induced across the coil see We want to find out flux first. Flux is equal to Li. Why flux? Because we know EMF can only be found through this formula, minus d phi over d. So we do not have the information about this. So let us, let us find out flux first. So flux, this is L, L is equal to 10 Henry current. Current also we do not know. But we have the Ohm's law with us. So we can calculate the current at least using the information that is provided. So, V is equal to IR, V is equal to 12 volt, I is the current, R is the resistance of 6. So, I is equal to 2 amperes from here. So, you put this as 2 amperes, you get the flux as 20 Webers. Then you have EMF 20 divided by 10 to the power minus 3. So, this will be 2 into 10 to the power 4. The answer is this. Quickly write it.
Okay, let's start with mutual induction. So see, in mutual induction, same story occurs. That flux changes. Due to increase in magnetic field or decrease in decrement in the magnetic field, that is a different thing. Flux changes. So change means it's not necessary that it has to increase only. It's just to change that flux. Then when flux changes, then there is induced current. This will produce induced EMF. This is the same story that occurs. The difference that arises in this last point that this occurs in an adjacent coil. That's This is the difference which will occur. So induced EMF in this one. So we call this first coil as the primary coil. And in which induction is being done, this is called as the secondary coil. So primary coil and the secondary coil. This is the entire setup of how mutual induction follows. So what is mutual induction? It is the phenomena of production of induced EMF in one coil due to change of current in the neighboring coil. Formula is also same. Phi is equal to Mi. Here we have M, which is the coefficient of mutual induction or you can simply say this is mutual inductance. Coefficient of mutual induction or mutual inductance. Okay, SI unit is Henry, same thing. Uh, same thing, one Henry, how you can write this, one volt by one ampere per meters. Uh, this I'll discuss, first you just write down from here.
okay let's see the mutual inductance of two long solenoids now see when we were discussing the mutual inductance of a long self inductance of a long solenoid because it was self inductance one long single solenoid was sufficient but since we are discussing mutual inductance now now two long solenoids have to be in vicinity of each other so that mutual induction can occur so instead of one radius, we'll be having two radii. Instead of one current, we'll be having two values of currents. But length of both of these should be the same. Length should be the same. You will not have L1, L2. Length should be the same. That's a condition because the, uh, the part is that current will be flowing and the magnetic field will be there in particular region only. So even if you expand the length of another solenoid, that doesn't affect your answer because magnetic field is confined to one point only. Similarly, N1 and N2 are the number of turns. Okay. Now, see. Phi 1, what we are going to do? Flux of first one is having magnetic field of second one. This is what is the concept of mutual inductance, which you have to understand. Phi 1, this is equal to B2 A N1. See. N, B, A, this is the formula. Now look here. These are two coils. If I'm talking about this coil and this is one coil. So flux one is B2, A, N. Magnetic field of second one. See, magnetic field of second coil is changing, which is producing the flux in the first coil. That's why we are using phi 1 where phi 1 is considered because we are talking about this but magnetic field is due to this. That's why B2 A N1. N1 why? Because coil is N1 only. Just it's that we are it's just that we are taking the magnetic field of this one. And magnetic field of this coil will be mu naught N i. So N2 I2 because of the formula of the solenoid. So flux if you put this value here so mu naught n2 i2 a n1 all will be multiplied. Now from here, if you put this i2 here in the denominator, that will give you the value of mutual inductance phi by i2. So phi 1 by i2. So this is mutual inductance of 1 due to second one. So this is mu naught n2 i2 a1 n1 by i2. Basically, if you write i2 here, this i2 will be eliminated. So mu naught n2 a into n1. This is the formula similar to what you've studied in the previous portion. And if you're talk, calculating about this first coil, same thing you're calculating. So you will get the same answer. Current will be eliminated. See, B1, then phi 2. When you're taking phi 2, then magnetic field will be of the first coil. So B1, A and 2. So when you write the formula, B1, mu naught N1, I1, then you put this mu naught N1, I1, A into N2. Again, the formula is the same. Mu naught N1, N2, A by L. Here also mu naught N1, N2, A by L. So both are same. M12 is equal to M21. It's just that whatever is the radius, you have to choose according to that. See, if your radius is pi R squared, let's say we're talking about the first disk. So this is R1. The radius that you'll be taking is R1. And if you're talking about the second one, then you can too take R2. A coefficient of coupling, I'll tell later. First, write down this.
See, uh, when you are talking about the coefficient of coupling, it's basically a relationship between the mutual inductance and the self-inductance. Now, see, you have two coils. So, each coil will be having its own self-inductance. See, this is the self-inductance of first coil, L1. This is the self-inductance of the second coil, L2. And in between, there will be only one mutual inductance. Because, see, self-inductances are for individual coils. Since there are two coils, there will be two self-inductances. And between two coils, only one mutual inductance is possible. That's why there is only one mutual inductance possible. So, we have a coefficient of coupling, which is a relationship between M and L. That is mutual inductance and self-inductance and nothing else. Okay? So, this is just a constant. This value will be given. And one of these values will be missing and you will be asked to find out. Simple formula-based question, nothing comes from this topic. Coefficient of coupling can be mentioned in one line or two lines. Uh, write down this coefficient of coupling.
All right, done class. All those who have completed just text done in the chat column. Yahya has text, texted other students. Sufyan done. Saina, Khadija, Taha, Maryam done. What about other students? Sidra, Siddhika done. Okay. All right, class. Uh, this completes with EMI. Now we'll start with alternating current on Thursday. So let's see how much we are able to complete. We'll be starting with the basic definition of alternating current and direct current and the differences between the two. And then we'll see the electrode uh, AC dynamo. Basically, we'll first do the AC dynamo. Okay. So you all can leave. Attempt your after class assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.